I'm working on a pretty involved project here. It's a fuel trailer for a customer. And I've gotten to the point where I have about 100 gig worth of footage now on this build. And I realize that's probably going to be really difficult to boil that down to one 15 minute video and have any sort of explanation in the video. So I decided that since this is such a huge project that I will break it down into segments. I can show building the main trailer frame, show building the fuel tank, show building the fenders, and show building the hood. You know, kind of just do it in each section. So the point of my introduction here is look around on my channel because YouTube is notoriously bad for suggesting the next part of a multi-part build. I'll try to put it in a playlist, but... So this video is about building the frame of the trailer. Well, we're off to a good start. <laughs> uh, got the metal in here, we're getting ready to measure the length and see how close they were to 24 foot. Uh, they're 24 feet, two and a half inches. You know, 24 footers are usually over. I wheeled out my tape measure, came right out, no problems, measured it, wheeled it back in a little bit, and I was like, oh, wait, so I, ah, I better check one more time. So I seriously went down about where the angle are are. Pulled it back out to read it again, and the whole thing went boing! And it exploded. So, yeah. Well, I guess. I decided I better check the distance between the mounting brackets here. And this axle, a little wider on these mounting brackets than what I actually wanted. I'm actually going to have to make my plans a little different. I'm going to have to space these you know, the main rails of the frame, I'm gonna space them out an inch and a half from what I wanted. Not that big of a deal. The only problem is I have, you know, got the drawing all done. So I have to go back through and change all my dimensions. For the most part, it's pretty easy. Just add an inch and a half to everything, you know, right? Well, no, not really. Because up on the front of the hitch, where you know where the two side ones come together, being an inch and a half wider, they have to be just a little bit longer in order to meet in the tongue. You know what I'm saying? So I'll have to redo that. I can figure up that math real quick instead of changing the drawing. But if I ever make another one in the future, I at least know to shrink in the mounts an inch and a half. So, yeah. I have two holes drilled for the axle in this beam already. I went ahead and did that off camera so I could go through it and make sure that what I was doing was the right way to do it. So this is what I did. I was originally going to use the mag drill and I just couldn't figure out a good way to reach all the way through and get everything lined up and make sure those holes were actually in line. But I decided that maybe I could get these beams up in the mill Sure enough, I could. I'm using 5 8 inch bolts to go through this axle to hold it in place. And I'm also going to put in a crush bushing in it. So the first thing I did was drill with a half inch bit all the way through. The reason I used half inch to start out is because it's the only bit I could find that would actually go all the way through the square tubing that I had. Uh, I go, you know, down to 3 8 or something, and the bits get shorter. As soon as I jump up to 5 8 my bits are significantly shorter. So half inch is the longest bit I had and it just barely reached through. Then I drilled the top side out to one inch because that is how big my crush pushing is going to be. And then I reached clear down in there and drilled the bottom side out to 5 8 inch because that's how big my bolts are going to be. So that was my sequence of attack. Thank you. 
go take a break. My feet are absolutely frozen. Uh, the thermometer on the wall says I have it up to 57 degrees in here, but everything in here is just cold, like ice cold. Um, I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's just, the cold is just soaking into the garage. Um, it was zero degrees outside when I came out here this morning, and that's Fahrenheit, zero Fahrenheit. And I looked on my phone just now, and it says that with the wind chill, it's negative 17 Fahrenheit. So it is butt cold out there today. Tomorrow's going to be even funner because uh, the actual temperature is supposed to drop down to about negative 10 Fahrenheit. And I don't know what the wind chill is going to be on top of that, but it's going to be chilly. Um, it's pretty windy outside. This garage door over here has been rattling pretty much all day. I don't know, you'll probably be able to hear that if you listen in the background of the video. That little thunky thunk thunk all the time. And I can just feel the wind going through this place. So, uh, anyway, point being, it's butt cold. I'm going to go inside and warm up for a while. Um, I don't have a huge fire going in the wood burner right now because I am almost out of firewood. And I really want to save that for tomorrow when it is just going to be butt cold. So, uh, yeah. Gotta go on a firewood run again. <sighs> anyway, enough rambling. See you later. This part's gonna go quick. It's gonna look like a trailer in a hurry. When you weld this pitch together, I'll give you a little bit of advice, because I've done this in the past. <laughs> Don't weld this T back here solid first. Uh, that side of the rectangle tubing will shrink and really put a good bow in it. So make sure it's all tack welded together really good before you go back there and weld this. Then I just need to start cutting out this angle iron and make all the cross members for this thing. The two crucial cross members for this thing are the ones that I'm putting in right now. They're the front and back for the tank. The tank will actually span four cross members and the other two will be in the middle of the tank somewhere, so they really don't matter where they're at. But these two have got to be right. Cross members look really close together when you get them all in there. They're two foot apart. Well, about two feet. I think it actually works out to like 25 and a half inches or something, but anyways. That's pretty nice. Almost looks like a trailer. That's uh, back two feet here. I'm kind of thinking I should have cut that down to just 18 inches or something. Honestly, even a foot I think might have been enough. 
That looks pretty big. I don't think I need a space that big for, you know, just making a basket and a little platform to stand on. I knew when I built this that I was going to trim this back for the hitch. It's going to, I'm going to put an adjustable hitch on it. And the hitch is here. Get some measuring and I'm going to cut it off right about there. And you probably can't see it on camera, but the end of my weld is right there to this plate. So I just guessed it when I stopped welding. I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to use this plate as a straight edge and just take my porta band and cut it across there. I hope, anyway. That's my plan. Let's see how it goes here. That looks good, though. <laughs> slot underneath the axle there. I don't have enough room for a full washer, so I cut out these little washers here on the CNC plasma table real quick. It might be breezy out there. The tarp is hung up inside of the garage door. There's a garage door behind that tarp. It's still breathing that much. That's why I put this tarp up though, because that garage door is just worthless. I just made up a couple plates real quick on the mill and bolted the jack to the side over there. I really don't want to weld that jack on in case something happens to it, but once I get it, once I'm sure that it's going to be where it's at, I might actually weld this plate here that's closest to the camera onto the jack. Just put a bead like right at the top of that plate, and then I just got to finish welding up the coupler here. And there it is with the angle braces in it. Easy peasy. All right, what am I doing next? I don't know. Uh, well, I am not a happy camper at the moment. Oh, I can't believe I did this. So I just measuring, well, what I was actually measuring was up here at the front of the trailer. I was measuring this deck space, getting that all figured out. And then I realized that something wasn't coming up right in my measurements. <sighs> and I don't know how I did this because I just went and double checked my plans. And it's on my plans correctly. For some reason, I did not follow my plans. <sighs> I don't know how this slipped by me. I am so confused on this. But this cross member here should be right here at this line. The back side of this should be right there. I am off nine inches. Everything should be slid back nine inches. The only thing I can figure out I did, since that's nine inches, I mean, that's a very weird measurement to be off, right? So what I'm thinking I did is I drilled these wrong. 
because these are nine inches on centers. So I think I measured that one and then went that way instead of measuring that one and going that way. Does that make sense? This axle is should be nine inches back. So I think this hole is right. That one is wrong. So that hole should be clear over there. I based everything else off of where this axle is and just somehow did not double check on my measurements. Strangest freaking thing. Cross members are in. We are past that hurdle. Now I'm going to redrill these holes. And I was thinking about how to do this while I was spending my entire morning redoing these cross members. And I'm going to make a template. I'm going to take a piece of angle iron, cut some holes in it on the mill. I have to say, I absolutely love DRO. Oh my word. DRO is amazing. You'll probably get tired of hearing me say that in the videos from now on. It's just like cheating. It is so fast. And it lines up perfectly. Ah, now that's going to fit in there tighter than I thought. That's a really nice one inch hole, apparently. There we go. There we go. I'll give you a nice plug to hold that perfectly there. Heck, I don't even need to put a clamp on that. So, I'll probably clamp that down somehow and then set up the mag drill. You didn't see that. Well, YouTube, there we go. I'm back to where I was, only back a little further. Oh, this literally took an entire day to cut all these cross members out, move them back, get them respaced, grind all the old welds off, and then redrill the holes and remount the axle. Oh, I cannot believe it took that long. Anyway, enough complaining. You know, make mistakes, you just gotta keep moving, right? That sometimes it kind of gets you down a little. Now the generator's here. I honestly didn't realize this was going to be a welder-generator combo. Didn't quite understand that at first. So, I'm getting ready to drill some holes in the angle iron and weld the uh, cross members in there. Yeah. I might need to take the dang pressure washer to this welder though here pretty soon. The only concern I have about using this generator is filling the gas tank because we are putting a hood over everything up here and that's going to be not too easy of a reach in there so I don't know. We'll see how that works. We had a couple good loud thunders just now and well doggy had to come in the garage and hide from it. <sighs> kind of hard to work around you, doggy. You're even on my mats there. Those are mine, not yours. Hello, doggy. I speak to you. I think Dakota's ignoring me.
there's the braces under the generator welded in. And I got a couple braces there for the def tank. I don't know exactly how this def tank is going to be put on here. They're not even putting one on at the moment. So I just put a couple braces across there and in the future we'll just have to figure out what the mounts are when they put one on here. Uh, I'm getting ready to sheet this thing. I'm going to cut the sheet at these bolts right here and sheet, put the floor down up to there for right now and then I'll cut another piece that finishes this off. But I had to fly in the sheet metal with my crane here, I guess one could say. And uh, yeah, it just got done raining finally. And we had six inches of rain. Freaking ridiculous. Um, my driveway is a swamp. It's ridiculous working out here. <sighs> when the heck did we get to Seattle? Man, in the part of Kansas I live in, 16 to 18 inches of rain per year is the normal. And I think we've had that in the last month, not exaggerating. It has been ridiculous. So anyway, got the sheet metal here hanging off my crane. And I'm going to start whacking it there. Well, I went and forgot to turn the camera on and record what the heck I was doing, but uh, yeah, we got this plate cut out, and there it is in the trailer. I guess you kind of call it a possum. This will be the little area where you set five gallon jugs and two and a half gallon oil jugs, and he said he wants to throw his grease gun in there, maybe some rags or something after you wipe your hands, you know. Having the letters in there we thought would be a good way for the oil to drip out and look neat and be customized. I was just gonna take these light boxes, and since I got the hole here, and the square tubing here, well, rectangular tubing, I was just gonna weld them on out here. That was my original plan. But I don't like that. With these steps being over here and just sticking out like that, I feel like that is a real, you know, knee knocker. I don't, I just don't like that at all. I think it looks ugly too. So, I've been debating about what to do, and I thought, well, I'll just stick them under here and weld them on. But I don't like having this sheet metal up against this metal because there's no way to get paint in between the two. And I'm also a little worried that if for some reason you back into something with this trailer or you go through too big of a dip or something like that, you know, things happen around the farm, right? You just mangle one of these boxes in a hurry. They're pretty thin sheet metal. I'm not even sure that's 14 gauge. I think it's 16 gauge. Pretty thin. Um, I'm gonna weld that plate to the possum so it's set up three quarters of an inch and then I'll just bolt this box to it with a couple bolts. Um, that'll allow two things. One, we can paint this trailer, then paint the boxes and then put it together so there'll be paint between the two. And then if anything ever happens to this box, you can unbolt it and replace it. So. I think that's a win-win. I'm a little sore. Oh, wow. Okay. Ah. Nope. You gotta have the ground clamp hooked up. All right, are you kidding me? It's one of those freaking welders that needs a ground clamp.
One of the things they requested was a way to make sure the five gallon buckets don't fall off the back of the trailer. I talked to them about just putting some angle iron and extended metal around the back, make a little cage, and they said no. They really don't want that for two reasons. First and foremost, it's going to be really hard to lift a five gallon bucket up and over that cage. And secondly, it's just going to become a catch all. So if they have spots that are designated five gallon bucket holders, they'll put a five gallon bucket there, right? So all this is is uh, two pieces of one inch square tubing that are 11 inches long. And then I cut out some little C moon shaped thingies with some holes in them on the CNC table real quick. That's literally just to cap the square tubing and give a place for you to put a bungee cord through. So it, the bucket actually doesn't hit the strap. So you don't have to rub on that. It just rubs on the square tubing. So that little edge should not cut through the bucket if I get this welded on right. the last one on. Now the reason I'm leaving this side open over here, like everything's kind of shifted to that side, is I figure they might stand back here to put fuel and equipment. If you ever work with farm equipment, you know sometimes that fill opening, the fill cap, is way up on the tractor. So I figure they might want this corner over here open to stand on. And also he said he wants to throw his grease gun back here too because he doesn't want the grease gun up front in that hood with all the tools and everything else.